Hi there, welcome to our daily Godcast of evening prayer on this rainy, lazy Saturday of the third week in ordinary time. I hope you're all staying home, staying dry, staying comfortable, and uh, enjoying a quiet Saturday as I am. It's a very rare for me day off, and uh, I try to take advantage of these uh, seldom <laughs> days off that I do get. And so it's been a quiet, quiet day here uh, at my house, and uh, I hope you're having a peaceful day as well. Um, today, the gospel today, <laughs> uh, love this gospel. I just absolutely love it. It's a story of Jesus' cross. He was just, we heard yesterday, he was teaching, preaching to the crowds from a boat. They were all crowding around on the shore, and he taught them at length uh, the the parables, and then he was explaining the parables to his disciples. And then we see in the gospel today that he instructs the disciples in the boats to set off across to the other side. Uh, I'm guessing it's the Sea of Galilee, probably so. So they're in the boat and they're crossing, and it gets stormy. Now these are fishermen, okay, for the most part. Not all of them, but, you know, there's enough fishermen on board this boat that you would think they were accustomed to all sorts of uh, conditions on the sea. But here they are crossing, and the boat was getting tossed by a storm, and there was water coming in, and it says they were terrified. And Jesus, meanwhile, was sleeping in the bow of the boat. And they went down, they woke him up. Lord, Master, don't you care that we're perishing? <laughs> he woke up, calmed the wind and the seas and was wondering where their faith was. <laughs> oh my goodness. The world is full of storms. There's always turmoil in each and every one of our lives. We always have a little storm brewing of some sort or another. And if we allow the storm to terrify us, to petrify us, to bring us to a point where we can't function. Shame on us. We have to trust. Trust if we have God in our life, like the apostles in the boat. They had Jesus with them, and yet they couldn't rest. They were petrified, terrified of the storm. He quieted the storm. He can do and will do the same for all of us. If we allow Jesus to fill our hearts, fill our lives, then whatever storms are brewing in our lives, we can be confident that with God's help, we'll get through them. He's not going to make them go away, but he'll give us the means, the wisdom, the wherewithal to deal with the storms that come up. So we don't have to be afraid of them. We seek his counsel. We look to his wisdom. And we find that inner peace that he gives us. And go about our life in a peaceful, calm way. Not panicking at every little storm. Remember when we were children and the thunder would come and the lightning and the wind and the rain and it got awfully spooky and scary to us kids and what did we do? We ran to our parents' room and we jumped up on their laps or in their bed with them and they held us and we felt safe. That's what, you know, that's why Jesus said to us, 
you know, my father is your father. So when you pray, say Abba, which translates to Daddy. And God has a big lap. And if we just reach up and ask him to pick us up, hold us, he will. And we can be safe, just like we were as children in the arms of our parents. Our Father in heaven loves us, embraces us, gives us a sense of peace and calm. One of the most repeated phrases from Jesus' lips, peace be with you. So, in the storms of life, be assured that you're not alone. You have God at your side, God in your heart, look for that peace that he gives you. Have confidence, have faith, trust in him. And he'll see you through whatever the world can throw at us. And the world does that. It's very good at stirring up the wind and the waves. But God is the master of all of that. So... Let us pray our evening prayer. Be at peace in the middle of whatever storm might be brewing in your life right now. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I rejoiced when I heard them say, Let us go to God's house. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city strongly compact. It is there that the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord. For Israel's law it is there to praise the Lord's name. There were set the thrones of judgment of the house of David. For the peace of Jerusalem pray, peace be to your homes. May peace reign in your walls, in your palaces, peace. For love of my brethren and friends I say peace upon you. For love of the house of the Lord I will ask for your good. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When you rose from the dead, Lord Jesus, you formed the church into your new body, and made of it the new Jerusalem, united in your spirit. Give us peace in our day. Make all nations come to your church to share in your gifts in fellowship that they may render you thanks without end and come to your eternal city. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. <clears throat> From the morning watch until the night, I have waited trustingly for the Lord. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleading. If you, O Lord, should mark our guilt, Lord, who would survive? but with you is found forgiveness, for this we revere you. My soul is waiting for the Lord, I count on his word. My soul is longing for the Lord, more than watchmen for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak in Israel, on the Lord. Because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Israel indeed he will redeem from all its iniquity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Listen with compassion to our prayers, Lord. The forgiveness of sins is yours. Do not look on the wrong we have done, but grant us your merciful kindness. From the morning watch until the night, I have waited trustingly for the Lord. 
Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this God highly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let everything in heaven and on earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. We possess the prophetic message as something altogether reliable. Keep your attention closely fixed on it, as you would on a lamp shining in a dark place, until the first streaks of dawn appear and the morning star rises in your hearts. First, you must understand this. There is no prophecy contained in Scripture, which is a personal interpretation. Prophecy has never been put forward by man's willing it. It is rather that men, impelled by the Holy Spirit, have spoken under God's influence. <clears throat> From the rising of the sun to its setting, May the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. In his splendor reaches far beyond the heavens, may the name of the Lord be praised. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the name of the Lord be praised. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. His disciples came and gathered around him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed, the Almighty <clears throat> has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. His disciples came and gathered around him, and he opened his mouth and began to teach them. Everyone who waits for the Lord finds joy. Now we pray to him, look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, you washed away our sins in your blood. Make us always remember your wonderful works. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. You called men to be heralds of your good news. Make them strong and faithful messengers of your kingdom. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. King of peace, send your spirit on the leaders of the world. Turn their eyes toward the poor and suffering. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Protect and defend those who are discriminated against because of race, color, class, language, or religion, that they may be accorded the rights and dignity which is theirs. 
Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. May all who died in your love share in your happiness with Mary, our mother, and all your holy ones. Look on us with favor, Lord, and hear us. Let us conclude our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Lord our God, help us to love you with all our hearts, and to love all men as you love them. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a sacred, holy, and happy Sunday tomorrow, and we will see you then. God bless. Good night.